Hey guys, what's up? Bye, Zach the Tron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this is a new series I'm gonna be trying out. Um, it's the base identification series. Basically, the idea around it is that I'm going to uh, go through some bases, talk about what aspects of them allow for certain attacks to be more effective. We'll take a look at the attack, um, mainly a Town Hall 9 series, I'm thinking, because Town Hall 9 has the most uh, diversity and probably you know, there's all different kinds of options you have when taking a look at a Town Hall 9 base, although I might extend it to like Town Hall 10 or Town Hall 11 as well, just depending on what you guys think. So let me know um, kind of what your feel for this series in the comments below. Also, sorry for the lack of uploads lately, been a little bit busy, and I probably will be over the next uh, little while, but I'll do my best to keep the uploads coming whenever I can. And uh, let's get right into this video though, taking a look at this base first, and you can see the army comp at the bottom. I'll make sure to have that visible um, as we talk through each attack. He's doing a zap quake on one of the air defenses. He's gonna drop his heroes in to take out another air defense, and he's gonna leave the queen alone and just take her out with a skelly spell. So, interesting attack, let's talk about why it can work. First, this air defense right here, which he uses his heroes for, um, the queen can reach it over the wall. His heroes are 30-30, and he has to deal with a few things, the CC troops as well, which he decides to lure with a few balloons up here. So he has to, just his heroes now, take out the CC and get through some of this HP down here to get to that air defense with his queen. It's a little bit cutting it close, a few giants to tank would have been nice because it gets very close. But when you have the air defense reachable, the queen can definitely do that. Um, that's a good trade there. The zap quake was on this air defense, and... I always talk about if you're going to zap quake an air defense, don't leave a bunch of stuff up around it because that way there'll be no place for your lava hound to latch onto and the balloons will kind of have to go there unprotected at some point in the attack. It's okay to zap quake this air defense because the archer tower, the wizard tower, they can kind of be uh, locked on to whatever's on that air defense. It's close enough that it will tank for the... Uh, for those defenses, there's nothing around this air defense really. There's like a, a mortar or cannon, which I think goes down. So not a whole lot besides that that's going to be a threat to the balloons, which is why it's okay to zap quake. Um, huge thing right here where this air defense is, it allows him to not have to take out the queen because he knows a lava hound will be right here tanking, meaning the queen will be shooting at it. No doubt. It's so close to the queen. Um, it's going to be easy. Uh, to predict the queen will be on it. Because of that, because there's a lava hound right next to the queen, he can drop just the single skelly spell and take the queen down. Also the lava pups, because you know probably one or two lava hounds will end up popping in this area because the air defense is there. The lava pups combined with the skelly, I'm um, going to take the queen out and it's especially important the air defense is right there because you know it'll be tanking for not only the queen herself, but local Teslas and other defenses that would otherwise be taking out the skeletons and or lava pups. So that's very important as well. Beyond that, um, just a good base to do an air attack on. These two air defenses are spread nicely. Easy targeting. You want to look for those archer towers you can target on the outside of the base. Let me know if I'm doing too much talking, if you guys just want to see the attacks more. But I'm doing my best to kind of make this a little more than just let's take a look at a few attacks type series. I want to like uh, give you guys the full scoop on the base. And hopefully it'll help you kind of take a look at bases in the future and be able to say, okay, I can take this base out with this army comp because it has these certain features on it. So there's the Zap Quake, there's the CC Lure, the heroes go down, the king, good ability, um, queen sitting back, she'll take out the dragon, and then step up for that air defense. <clears throat> like I said, it gets very close here, because the queen, um, still on that dragon, getting pulled off to the side, has all these point defense right there, has to pop the ability, takes out these defenses, and barely, and I mean barely, gets that air defense taken out. You can see how close it is. Um, right there she goes down, so gets the job done, uh, even though it was so so close there. Goes ahead and drops all three Lava Hounds, which is, you know, I don't know if it was the best option. Could have dropped one on the other air defense at a different angle, but it works out okay. The balloon's moving in. Has that fourth Lava Hound uh, to come the other direction, so I guess that works out. A Troll Tesla d diverts a few balloons, but they'll catch up in a moment. And take a look at it. Because everything's on all those Lava Hounds right next to the Queen, 
she's not targeting the skellies that much. I think she actually does break off one of the lava hounds, which allows her to target the skellies, but he has the poison, which is also a nice thing to have to slow the queen down if you're not taking her out with your kill squad. And the combination of the skellies and the lava pups eventually finishes her off. Uh, the balloons, I think, maybe a few crashes. And every once in a while, if there's defenses by the queen, you'll get a lucky bomb drop, which will take her out almost completely just by the drop of one of those golden bombs from a level 6 balloon. So right here gets a little bit dicey at the end because there's no local air defense to, and there's no lava hounds left up anyway, I don't think, um, to be tanking for those balloons. But they, you know, there's enough numbers to get the wizard tower in the expo they were taken out. We'll fast forward to the end here, have quite a few attacks. I don't want this to be a terribly long video. Um, I, I have five attacks I'm planning on showing, so two more air than two ground to give you guys the full scoop at Town Hall 9. Let's move on to 14 here. By the way, good war to Aura getting the win. They did a good job. Got us by two stars. I uh, didn't see much of it, but I think it was a pretty good war. Um, okay, taking a look at this base here, we're looking at another air attack and another pretty non-invasive air attack, meaning no big kill squad, mainly from the air. And the reason is uh, the queen up here, you know, pretty exposed. Not a whole lot to get if you send a kill squad in beyond her, so it's probably in the best interest just to use the heroes, take out the CC, take out the queen, just call it good. Anything else you invest might get wasted because it won't really get these air defenses unless you have a huge kill squad and they're pretty spread out anyway. Uh, but despite that, this is good for an air attack in general because you have all these archer towers that you can almost directly target. Um, so a lot of easy targeting, you want to look for that. If they're deep in the base, you know, it's a more of a travel time to get to them, but they're all pretty accessible. And uh, the air defense is nice and spread out. There are the sweepers in pretty good locations here, but he has the haste to counter that. I think pretty much all his spells are going, besides those poisons, are going uh, to his balloons. So the sweepers aren't much of an issue if you have those haste spells. And yeah, there's just not a whole lot on this base to throw him a curveball with his air attack. Um, five Lava Hounds, 18 Balloons. If you can take the heroes out at Town Hall 9, you don't have to do anything too extraordinary to get the 3-star. Just a nice, solid attack, and that's what this is. There is a Tesla farm by this Wizard Tower, but the air defense is close enough that the Lava Hound uh, tanks for some of them, and uh, the, the Balloons aren't on their own for that long. They can get the job done. So let's take a look at the attack. I'm not going to talk as much about this one, but um, for these Penta attacks... Look to see if the air defenses are spread out, if you can easily target some of these defenses, which you can all along the uh, the west coast of this base. And uh, that's pretty much it. Easy Queen makes it even better. Easy CC doesn't have to invest a lot into her or into the Queen or into the CC to take those out, just the heroes pretty much. So that makes it even easier and sets him up for success because he can invest more in his air attack to get the job done for the three star. So goes ahead and drops in a few wall breakers, the heroes and the poison, gets all that taken out. And one thing I want to note right here, if you don't have a kill squad really, if you're just sending in your heroes, kind of suicide heroes, like you know they're going to go down, the Queen will go down to the expo, you know that's going to happen. It's a good idea to save a poison and use that on possible air skellies because they're pretty uh, common. And the concern is, especially if your pups die, you could be in a situation where those air skellies do some serious work on your balloons and or lava hounds. So you just want to have that poison. You can see a few of them already coming out. I think he uses the poison. It's, it's hard to deploy because you, you know, you're trying to deploy your balloons and your hounds. You, the skellies are running all over the place. The pups take them out for the most part, but there are scenarios, not this one as much, but there are scenarios where the um, the air skellies don't have a whole lot of pups in the area, so they start doing work on balloons. If people place them in good spots, the pups won't be able to do much, and uh, especially if the pups go down quickly for whatever reason. So it works out great here. I like that last heal for that last group of defenses. Like I said, there was a lot of stuff on the west coast of this base on the left side there, so it was important he had that heal, and even kind of a swag haste just to move those balloons on for cleanup. Nice attack to Nano John. We got uh, three more. We'll keep it moving here. I'll uh, go to our last air attack with a slightly slightly different base and a slightly different army comp here. 18, um, Jamie. And uh, this one, it was worth it to invest more in the kill squad. And when you're looking to see whether you should do a non-invasive attack, like the last two, non-invasive meaning not a big kill squad, just le leaving it for the air uh, mainly, Versus one of these uh, stoned attacks with the three golems, a big kill squad. It's really the air defenses for the most part. 
if you look at the angle here, if he comes from around the barracks and comes through the base like this, he can get three air defenses, maybe even four with the, both those jumps and the queen. Tremendous value. Um, and from there, he doesn't need a whole lot. These buildings can be targeted pretty easily. Uh, there is the mortar kind of in the way, but for the most part, it's pretty easy pathing. So an air attack is also a good option. Air in general is a good option for Town Hall 9. It's uh, it's definitely stronger than ground right now, I would say. We're seeing it a lot more often. Um, the mortars are kind of a, an annoying, but besides the mortars, uh, these defenses are the next layer, these wizard towers and archer towers. So balloon pathing, not too hard. But the main thing, those three air defenses, he also gets uh, both sweepers, uh, I think. Yeah, he'll get both sweepers and the expo, some of these bonus buildings as well. So it just makes sense. Um, when people put their, you know, those air defenses there, they don't have to be directly next to the queen. But if you can find a way to path your, your kill squad along in kind of one coherent push and take out the queen as well that's going to be a recipe for success most of the time a few teslas popping right there but has the golems to tank uh wizards nice wide funnel that's important to uh to get some of these bonus buildings taken out and also create a nice funnel for the bowlers which will be in the cc people ask me all the time if you don't have access to bowlers i'd say valks if you can if you can get some high level valks or a pekka Witches are even a good option. Just some kind of DPS. Maybe wizards are, are going to be your best bet. Um, if you don't have, I mean, if you don't have bowlers, you probably don't have other high level troops. So wizards might be your best bet. And uh, just bring some DPS in addition to your heroes behind those golems. So everything moving through. I like that heal to keep everything up in midst of giant bombs and whatnot. The next jump was important because he has to connect the queen. If you're going to send a kill squad this big in, you might as well get the queen as well. Um, you pretty much have to. There's not enough lava pups or anything to take her out. There was the lava hound in the CC that goes ahead and pops. So he has to deal with the pups there, but no big deal. Balloons coming in, just kind of a nice... Um, shell of the base left over for him to deploy these balloons around and the great thing is they're taking out cannons which typically don't get much value but when you still have bowlers and wizards and heroes left up taking out those cannons takes dps off of them so it's kind of a symbiotic relationship here between the two parts of the attack balloons moving through that lava hound does a great job um right there it pops but the balloons are right there and uh, doesn't have much back end stuff, so these wizard towers are going to be a, a nuisance. But the queen's coming through, she will help out. Uh, I think the balloons probably would have gotten it anyway. Uh, right here, the main group gets targeted and they start to fall, but uh, the queen's there nonetheless, taking out the last few buildings, and that'll be a wrap. Nice attack. Let's take a look <clears throat> at two ground attacks, a um, little bit different both, but I think they also illustrate some good concepts as far as base identification goes. So right here, there's the three star, nice attack to Jamie, MC, and uh, we'll move on. Okay, 19 here, Sub-Zero, this one, we'll pause for a moment, was a seven healer attack. These used to be more common a little ways back, but when you see weird bases with such spread out point defense, this one's actually not as spread out as some others, but you can see in the middle of the base, there's pretty much nothing. When it's this decentralized, healers are going to be extremely powerful because there's going to be inevitably these points in the attack where there's no, not much damage coming in. That's the chance for the healers or um, the, or sorry, that's the chance for the healers to heal up whatever's in the base, be it Valks, Pekka, Bowlers, um, heroes, that kind of stuff. The rages also help when you encounter a lot of defenses because it, you know, even it amps up that heal. Even when they are taking damage, they're really not because those rage healers do a lot of work. Um, these spread out bases look to use healers. You don't have to be as extreme and use seven, but it works out well here. And uh, also, I'd say Valks or Pekkas, they're great troops for these uh, spread out bases to go with the healers. Because they're able to be healed, they have enough hit points that they won't die before the healing effect can kind of help them back up. And they also do a lot of damage, which is important because um, you want to move through the base relatively quickly. So right there, drops in the king. I think he missed the king's ability, actually. Just not paying attention or too busy deploying other things. So loses the king, but despite that, he's actually going to crush this base. Queen walks um, go hand in hand with what I was saying. The healers... 
uh, are very powerful. So a queen walk, of course, is going to be a very powerful thing on these spread out bases, these decentralized bases, because you don't have to invest as many spells or the ability in keeping her up. Besides this initial encounter right here with the defensive queen in that compartment, uh, she can pretty much just walk around the base dealing with point defense one at a time. So it works out real nicely. Here's the Valks and the Bowlers. They have a nice kind of... Uh, Complement here one does the uh, damage up front one kind of sits back and shoots over walls nice central jump to keep them moving through the base here and uh, There's there's all these air traps. that are gonna start triggering But he has quite a few healers and he doesn't need them towards the end as much the important thing is these Valks are pretty much at full health same with the bowlers and He has these back-end hogs which were a, re a real nice kind of third stage to this sending in those back-end hogs because they can just get those little nooks and crannies that the uh, the bowlers and the Valks can't reach. The queen, of course, still at full health, still has the ability. Like I said, great value uh, for the on the queen walks when there's not that much concentrated point defense. Crushes this base, nice attack to Sub-Zero. And let's take a look at one more. Going to be a bit of a longer video. Um, but I think, you know, it's nice to see a lot of different types of bases to make this kind of a better educational video for identifying bases seeing multiple types multiple types of attacks um, this next attack is more of a traditional common ground attack we're seeing right now it has i believe two golems i think there's bowlers in the cc once again look at the base spread out and oh i forgot to pause it okay uh new to the series of course uh you guys i'll go ahead and go back just so you guys can see the base here forgot to pause it and did i forget to pause the other one too I can't remember. Um, trust me, I'll get better my first time with this series. Anyway, uh, looking at this base right here, let's go ahead and hit the replay so we can see his troop bar. Um, you can see right here, this air defense kind of separates the base, and it allows for a queen walk to kind of just go along this strip, taking it out. And that way, the funnel is kind of naturally created by the base, meaning when he sends a kill squad up this direction, there's nothing on the left save that air defense, which doesn't do anything to ground troops that's going to be an issue. I can't remember if he has Teslas in here, but um, regardless, the point is there's not there's nothing that appears to be there, which makes it great for sending uh, bowlers and stuff in that can be distracted. The funnel is naturally created. There's nothing flanking, so the golems are going to do all the tanking. Plus, we see this concentration of wizard towers and most likely you know some giant bombs in the core too. Um, and golems are a great counter because the splash damage doesn't really affect them that much. So we can come in here, disarm that part of the uh, of the base, and send some hogs in around these defenses to flank. But the, the main point is the queen can get some great value by just taking on this stuff one at a time. He has to use a rage or two once she encounters um, some, you know, the queen, the king, I think the expo. Um, he has to invest a little bit. But for the most part, there's not a huge risk of her going down. The air defense is far enough back that it won't take out the healers. And the funnel is easily created. You want to look for natural flows on the base as far as um, your troops go. Natural ways your troops can uh, avoid being surrounded by defenses. Taking the defenses head on, having the golems tank, nothing flanking. Uh, that's very important. So very easy stuff right here. Takes out those defenses, takes out the CC troops. I believe the queen was intended to go in here and uh, take out that air defense as well. That would definitely make the funnel better. Um, but it's already a pretty solid funnel. A few Teslas by that DE storage, which is Kill Squad will have to deal with. But of course, it's better to deal with this stuff early when you have all your troops left up so you can take it out relatively quickly, which he does. So this is Tornado Top Hat, by the way, coming through the base here. The Queen um, hasn't used the Rage yet, hasn't needed it. I think he might need it right here for the King. But uh, you can see the tremendous value he's getting on these spread out bases just for the price of the healers and the queen, not even the rages uh, for most of the walk, you can get some great value. But right here, he will have to help the queen up, and he's ready for it. You know, when you're planning, you want to see, when does my queen need that rage? And he probably was planning and said, okay, the king, the expo, the archer tower, definitely going to need it there. So we can just kind of turn his attention there for a moment, rage her up, then get back to his deployment. Uh, but the heal, um, actually hasn't dropped the heal yet, but the rage and the jump are what he used on the bowler so far. Real nice stuff there. They got great value. You can see how many bowlers are still left up, and that's because the golems were tanking. Uh, because there was nothing flanking, nothing could target the bowlers. The golems were out in front, nothing to kind of cut them off to surround them, uh, stuff like that. So he has always bowlers up for the most part. 
There come the hogs. Um, nice little heal he had left over. I don't know where he put the next... I think... Okay, he used one rage on the queen, one rage on the kill squad, and then the jump on the kill squad, the heal on the hogs. That sorts it out. I was a little bit confused at first, but that makes sense. Um, awesome attack. Kind of a weird giant bomb. Uh, gets those hogs, but the healers peel off onto, it, onto the hogs. How about that? Um, nice stuff there. Uh, crushed this base, you can see, um, and it was an awesome attack. Nice job to Tornado Top Hat. Hope you guys like this series. Let me know if you want me to continue it, possibly expand it to Town Hall 10 or 11. Probably won't be as interesting because we're not seeing quite as much diversity, but it's still very important to identify bases at the top levels as well to determine what attacks you need to use, especially when it's even harder to get the 3-star or the 2-star, whatever a successful attack is at Town Hall 10 slash 11. So, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, Sectatron out.